with Polly John Pythagoras. Let him match. Yeah, triple okay. cash. Yeah. I seen a metaverse through metatope, my eyes a megaphone Customize my empty skin to optimize my flesh and bone Phase 1 evolution, revolution Smart contracts inside your smartphone Phase 1 evolution, revolution Help me healthy ET phone Whole body markerless motion capture The metaverse broken after the metatope golden era The whitelist still open, hurry up what you need Golden chariot Holy virgins that's holding cherubims Paving the road with fairy dust Create, create the avatar of your wildest dreams Yeah, and use it inside your live stream and all yeah. your metaverses, favorite games and widescreen. Metatope, visualize your digital audience. All right, all right. Let's stop panicking. We are out of the panic room. Everyone, thank you for coming in, being here on time, chilling out with the, with the squad. Uh, got the homies in here early, Mr. Ape and Richard stroll, strolling through. We'll get to you, uh, to you boys here in a second. Um, let's say hi to the to the homies that's uh that are also here. We got Crypto Medic on the stage. How you doing, man? Hey, ten four, Chris. Great to have the team back, man. Tope Talk, forty four weeks. Where did all the time go? I don't know. Happy four twenty to everybody who celebrates. I always got a chuckle out of the medical calls on four twenty. Wait, sir, you say you ate the whole pack of gummies? Just. Be safe out there, you know. Have a great day. I'm glad to be here. Let's go. Fantastic, fantastic. Our CEO, Jordan. What's going on, Jordan? How are you uh, How are you holding up on the other side of the country? Uh, doing well, man. Doing well. Glad to glad to be here. Uh, stoked for today's episode. A uh, little, little break during the day, and uh, we'll get back to work shortly. But, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Awesome, man. I'm not quite sure. I tried to bring up Ape and Richard. I don't know if you guys are listeners or speakers, if you're just ignoring these requests that I'm sending you. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys should pop up and say hi. Uh, Walker, what's up, man? Walker was down bad. Oh my God. It was, it was, it was sadness. It was uh, like the Pablo Escobar uh, memes where there's just somebody sitting in the, sitting in the, standing in the pool with no water, sitting on the swing by himself, having, you know, sitting at his, dinner table with no dinner but he's back to the request my apologies but how's it doing man it was dope meeting you guys in nyc well, I, I met you already chris we got to meet jordan and walker man great vibes man appreciate you guys sure bro can you hear me okay richard on this phone yeah i can hear you can you hear me yeah yeah when i let you up you just uh you were you missed like what i was saying and <laughs> you jumped right in the middle but you know it's okay it's okay because you Ubered me around, so I, I didn't mind it too much. Um, what's going on, Walker? How you doing, bro? Yo, yo, yeah, no, it's great. It's great to see you again, bro. Glad to have you in the space. Um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one. Yeah, you know, I've been I've, I'm still down pretty bad. I mean, I've got like 50 followers. The ratio's off, you know, real bad. But hey, I've got the meme the meme coins to keep me company. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see some uh, we'll see some pops today. Yeah, you know it's uh it's it's funny. Um, if you haven't followed Walker, follow him back. He will uh he will he will shoot you back a follow. You know it's he's following everybody at this point. He's got to find any type of friends in these uh, Twitter streets. But I don't think he's missed much because my Twitter feed is full of uh shitcoin talk. That's pretty much it. I have not seen anything outside of maybe like uh psychex or Psy whatever you guys were texting me about i saw that from uh from on uh, twitter and then uh starbucks i saw one person post about starbucks nfts but you know um we have enzo here what's up enzo how's uh how's uh life treating you hey man how's it going uh i uh pretty good i i just got shelly back today from uh from the airport so that that was a great feeling uh, the house was beginning to be a little lonely, not going to lie. Um, but uh, yeah, besides that, uh, I understand what you mean with all the uh, meme coin uh, talk going on. So uh, yeah, I was doing great till earlier today where I aped at the top and got wrecked all the way down. Um, but besides that, I was doing great for a while. Sad moments. Well, you know, there's uh, there's some cool, interesting stuff going on. Before we, uh, you know, dive into any um, of this uh, this 
this talk, let's make sure we remember there's obviously no financial advice in here. This is all for entertainment purposes only. And, um, yeah, just do exactly the opposite of what I tell you, and you'll probably do way better than I am. Um, I think I have uh, spent more money on gas fees in the last day. Uh, well, yesterday, because I haven't traded anything today. I haven't, I haven't been really wanting to accept any more gas fees. But, yeah, I, I, my, all my profits washed away. You know, my, my Pepe coin is just – it's gone. My, my boop, I sold my boop, and then it went up 35% um today that that's great um so yeah just uh if walker's down bad i'm down bad everyone else is up everyone's you know shopping for houses uh, apparently you know like they skipped the lambo they're just going straight for the for the houses here nowadays it's it's pretty crazy they understand there's no gas in, in florida apparently like in so south florida so what's the point of having a lambo if you're just gonna not be able to drive but um yeah, so let's jump in some of to some of this interesting news in the market. Obviously, we just got back from NFT NYC. Uh, myself, Jordan Walker, saw Mr. Richard up there. Um, we missed Ape. You know, he was he was uh, too busy on heavy construction equipment. But you know, it's okay. It's okay. There'll always be another one. And uh, you know, Richard, how was how was your trip, man? All right, Richard's trip went well. You know, I'll just speak for him. He he had a great time driving. I think he there he is. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, my bad. I got cut off there. What were you saying? No, I was saying what how was you know, what was your favorite thing about NFT NYC? Bro, I think it was just getting to honestly, like this is the reason I've been going out to these events after LA. Um, it's just been the networking. It's just networking to the next level, in my opinion. Um, yes, you can sit on spaces, you can hang out with people. Um, you can, you can, you know, talk, you get to really know people even over the phone and video chats and all that. But like actually experiencing NYC with y'all sitting down, getting food, chatting it up, getting to know more about each other. Like that's just, in my opinion, like, like, like real relationship, not, not real, but not saying the other relationship building is fake, but you, you're able to build relationships to the next level. And uh, yeah, so in, in my opinion, it was, it was once again, just being there, getting to connect with people, IRL, and just, you know, have a good time, but also, you know, talk business when it makes sense. Oh, well, I thought it was going to be that you drove me around in Ubers for a couple hours. <laughs> All right, but, you know. right, chauffeuring you. Yeah, man. I mean, outside of that, if you're talking event-wise, I mean, shoot, I was a fan of AKCB. That was cool. Um, the one pizza one with Friday beers and a few others. That was a really cool event. Like, you know, uh, later in the evening, but, um, yeah, I don't know. All, all the events at times can, can kind of be a little bit of the same. Yes. Yeah, some are way better than others, but you know, I'm kind of there for the same reason. That's true. Yeah. It's uh, I think it's, it was interesting. There was a, for the, there was one event for the first time. I think I've ever seen anything like it. Um, it was uh, the first night. The fr it was the first night that the ATS event took place, and it was inside the Gramasi or Gramercy, whatever it's called, that area, the theater. And you go in and you like go down the basement. They had some like different like little tables there, you know, to open bar, yada yada. And I went with like you know uh, Coco and his brothers and um, those guys. And we it was it was kind of funny because like you we, they're like all right everyone you know everyone's go go into the theater and you walk in and it's like you walk into like the middle of the theater and you like turn around and there's just, it, that's where all like the, the layers of the chairs are. And there's just a bunch of people sitting there staring at you. So it's like, they, I thought we were going to get like, like it was like some weird, like slaughtering or something. You know, like we were all, we were like the Guinea pigs out in the middle of the theater. Like when people just said, I'm like, Brando, what what's going on? He's like, Oh, he's like, yeah, we're doing a, we're doing a, like a, like a, a panel. I'm like, dude, it's like, 10 o'clock at night, the music's pumping. You're going to turn all this off and start talking? And he's like, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we did. It was pretty wild. I was like, all right. And uh, it was cool. It was himself, um, like, three, uh, Puff Puff Pandas, and another, like, like some of the, his ecosystem. So, it was, you know, it's cool to hear some of them talk. Um, and, and from there, we ended up going to a different event. So, yeah, there was definitely that was definitely the weirdest thing to like just be like in a in a mode like everyone's talking, being loud to like pitch silence. Then you got Brando. It's like a Twitter space live. <laughs> I was like, all right, 
you know, uh, I guess we're not getting any, uh, you know, there's shots are not working right now. You know, there's no refill in your drink. And we didn't have seats. So we're just like standing in the middle of the theater, pretty damn close to them. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. But other than that, I think, uh, Jordan, what was your, you know, what was your favorite part of NFT NYC? Hands down, uh, going with you, Walker, and Richard to a vegetarian restaurant and seeing the look of confusion on your face when you guys realized it was a vegetarian restaurant and that the the meat wasn't actually meat um and uh that was that was pretty amazing um got to see a couple hangry grown-ass men uh dealing with uh new york city and and all that but uh other than that, um, I, I'll piggyback off of what Richard was saying and, and getting to to talk to people that whether they're new or old friends in the space, and old friends are people that we've known for a year, but uh, connecting with people uh, in real life. I mean, it's like Twitter. There's a reason why Twitter spaces are what they are. People like talking, right? It's, it's more than just typing words on a screen. It's having a conversation. And I think it's even... I think we all realize it's much more valuable to actually do this in person. It's hard. We're all over the country. I mean, we've got um, Richard. What year? I think I believe you're in Philly, um, and we got guys in Florida, Arizona. I mean, Midwest. So, Richard, where are you again? So I was in Philly for about eight plus years, and as of like end of last year, moved back to like the Western PA, not far from Pittsburgh area, about an hour and a half from Pittsburgh. So yeah, that's where I'm currently at. But I, I did spend two nights in Philly after NYC to kick it with some, with some friends. So yeah, still, still got a lot of roots in Philly. Got it. I love it. I love it. We actually did a, uh, one of our, on our, on our parent company side, we did a deal with Alan Iverson uh, recently. So uh, got to, got to represent a little bit, but no, um, Chris, to answer your question, the, interpersonal interactions just talking whether it's just like seeing what other interests people have beyond web three or talking about what projects they're working on just truly connecting in 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 real life um was really special so that that was by far my favorite part for sure yeah that was uh that was by far the worst soup i've ever had in my entire life um i would rather eat um, it's like cream of mushroom. I, I hate mushrooms, but I would rather eat, I would even eat like seafood soup before I ever have that again. That was something I've like, w there is not supposed to like lentils already vegan. You don't have to vegan it anymore. Like it's already vegan. There's no reason to like strain out the lentils and turn it into like a brown mush. Like looked like, looked like something that wasn't supposed to be eaten, but I almost gave it to the homeless guy that, uh, that was lost that was about to uh, eat Walker's hair. Um, but Walker, speaking of, you know, what, what was your favorite part of uh, NFT NYC? I mean, honestly, like, I, I think that the entire experience, you know, like we were talking about how different it was from last year. And, and let me clarify, you know, when I just looked across the industry, you know, what type of projects are there? What type of activation? What type of headliners? I mean, truly, it felt like, you know, maybe there was a quarter of the liquidity surrounding that event um, as, as the year prior. And that posed a lot of, you know, downside, but it also posed a lot of really awesome opportunities to, like, really connect with builders in the space. And, and people who were there for the, you know, the long haul, it felt a lot more intimate, you know, in that connection, in the connections you were making versus, you know, just, just being so, um, <clears throat> so ran over by the sheer volume of events and, and interactions that we were having last year. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't really take many personal relationships away from it as I did this year. So I would say that was, that was my favorite part. Yeah, it makes a lot. Of, that makes a really good point that brings up is that, um, y yeah, it, it, there was less. What's up? I <laughs> see so you, you were saying it brings up a really good point. I said we're all down bad. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> that. But more or less, like having like less than last year. I mean, there was so many events last year that it was like 
we were diversified and conquering whatever the hell we called it. And it was like, it was like we, it, there's so much going on and you're trying to hit them all on the same night. And I mean, some of these events were like ticketed, like there was events that we paid hundreds to like that, like between everyone I knew, like there was so much money going around to just pay for like to get in places. And this year, the majority of stuff like was free. Um, there was only like, I think a couple uh, that was, that we ended up having to pay for, which I think one of them was the ATS event to get board apes in. And there was like 60 ahead. So that was interesting. But, um, yeah, they, so what that did is that like really put a lot of these different builders and influencers all together in like the same rooms. It wasn't so spread out to where like you didn't see it, like somebody from the ecosystem that you wanted to see by the end of your trip. I mean, there was like only one person that I really didn't get to see. And that was, uh, Rembrandt Flores is a good friend. And, um, the only party that I felt like none of us really got like, or didn't like, it was like it was like the special special party or whatever the case is that none of us got approved for was like the Steve Aoki event and I mean it looked cool it just looked like it was a packed house and uh, for Steve Aoki um, at the marquee so yeah I mean it was really interesting to meet Leap oh well, not meet Leap I mean obviously met Leap before but obviously see Leap see K Money multiple times see like um, influencers um, like from the you know the influencer groups like. The BitBoy Cryptos, Wendios, and stuff like they uh they were at a lot of the same parties as us again, as it was in NFTLA, and and typically that doesn't happen. Typically, there's like more VIP experience for different type of people in our space, um, and a lot of it would be paid for. So that that was really a that was a really interesting aspect of this year. But like I just looked at like the Telegram chat with all the influencers and like consensus. I think like I think Crypto NDO has signed up for like 50 different events. I mean, it, it's the, the it's consensus this year has got like it's not just NFT. So like, it, there's something special about how like all of us as an NFT communities like had a chance to run into each other um, and it being more centric like that versus like what's what what's about to take place in Austin. It, it's got to be like you know there's just too much. It, it would be like an overload. Um, trying to, and then like, what if you go places and it's just dead and it's dead and you go to the next place, it's dead. So for the most part, I think there was only like one party, um, or event that really didn't have anybody. And it was like one of the biggest venues that Walker went to. So, uh, I, I saw medic. Did you ever hand up or do you want me to go Jordan? No, I was just wondering if you were going to ask me what my favorite part of NF, of, of uh, NYC NFT. All right, let's yeah. go to Jordan. Let's Real, go Jordan. <laughs> Real quickly, I just want to make sure that everybody, uh, all of our listeners today, caught that subtle flex from Chris to uh, to show off that he is in the influencer chats, um, just because he's getting the alpha from all the influencers. So, Chris, you are you're way cooler than I will ever be. But Medic, how was your trip, uh, or how was your NFT NYC? You know, mine was fantastic because with you guys out of town, the rest of us always get a lot of work done. <laughs> but it was wonderful to see you guys go and uh, and make a splash again, as you always do. Well, I'm not the coolest one. Frank's and Jordan's DMs. I don't get any DMs from anybody. Um, in fact, like I don't even get likes. I, I like Jordan's GM every single morning, typically right when it's posted because I have notifications on. But whenever I post anything, I don't remember the last time I saw a like from Jordan. So, yeah, anyway. But um, – yeah, so that was a. It, it is interesting to be in some of those chats. I'm not an influencer, but it's. I think uh, it's something that you know. Over time, we uh, we will definitely definitely be using these different chats to uh, help us drive our our uh, our product into more and more eyeballs. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's a cool thing about these different alpha groups and stuff that exist. And the more you get involved with them, you're and, and a lot of people have to be a lot of the a lot of these start from meeting in person. Um, at these different events and creating those relationships. And, and I mean, it's not more or less like it's like a level of trust, like that you're not going to like shill something that's going to, you know, that is going to just be a scam or, you're, you know, it's, it's really just understanding like who's around you at all times. And this space is Web3. So it's like, you know, it, it, it does feel kind of cool to be in some of these groups. But anyway, the uh, with with that being said, you know, going into what we've all been experiencing this week, um, for about a week now, is the this uh, this this market? You know, we've seen a lot of focus uh, shift. Like the last thing we were watching was Nakamigos. 
Uh, it looks like Anon is quitting Web3 and it's offloading all his NAC amigos. That's interesting. Um, but that was like the big thing, right? It was like so close to one ETH. Everything else is crumbling. NAC amigos was winning. And now it's everyone is now a, a, a coin expert. You know, we have a ton of amazing coin experts now. Um, people have shifted. They've, they've been an NFT expert their entire life. And now they've just in one day, they have, they made about, you know, a two or three X bag on a Pepe. And uh, they are ready to shill every coin that has anything to do with, uh, with a, you know, that with Dex tools. So keep in mind, it's a scary world. It's very scary out there in these streets when it comes to the shit coins. And I think that, you know, is it, uh, how long do you guys think this is going to be? Uh, because I think maybe there was like one mint yesterday in, uh, in NFTs. And I, I was ready for the free mint to leave, you know, like the free mint we've been dealing with forever. Like the, it feels like half a year now, it's just free mint after free mint every single day. But now this kind of like resets the cycle. And I think we're going to see some insane deals on collections um, that, are, that are communities that typically, you know, for some of us get priced out of over time. And uh, it looks like there's there's going to be some some entries into these different communities that uh, that you might not have, uh, that, you know, exposure in. Is that something you guys uh, agree with? Yeah, I would agree. I definitely seen that sentiment of like it being quote unquote meme coin season, right? And overall, um, yeah, seeing I think that's affecting floor prices for NFTs as a whole. But it was interesting because I jumped into NFTs pretty late into the bull run. Um, and so I saw like the the pinnacle and then i just saw the the falling afterwards and the one thing that i heard during that was that nfts were pumping like post crypto because you know people were were you know pretty down on the crypto market and they were starting to move their funds more into nfts because they felt it was a stabler i don't know i guess it depends on the project but from what i was hearing that they 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 felt it was a better store of value than crypto at the time so it's interesting because i feel like it's flipping now and it's going back to crypto who knows for how long and we might be like in a longer bear market with nfts while crypto pumps and then we see that cycle repeat itself where you know um it's the shift i'm sure at one point yeah it's going to bounce out but um when that shift happens again to more nfts over crypto i don't know but what are your thoughts i'm not i'm not a an expert <laughs> i mean i think a few of us have probably seen a cycle before like i mean i definitely think walker would probably have a better idea regarding like the cycles of things but uh typically this is actually to me it's like a short-term bearish for nfts but long-term bullish because it's it's getting that cycle around to where there will be new liquidity that goes into the NFT market. In the meantime, we're seeing some of it sucked out in order for people to degen and uh, thinking that they're going to, you know, get turned 25 into 1 million like one person did, you know, and it's like everyone thinks they're the next one, but they don't understand that how many bots, how many DeFi traders exist that have have so many different ways to hide, you know, their, their movement of their money. I mean, just like an example would be that... Uh, fade uh i think zach xpt basically just broke down that fade was like moved out like three hundred thousand dollars um underneath everyone's eyes like without anybody noticing they just were sucking the liquidity out of that coin as it, as it moves and that's uh that exists it's a real thing so walker anything you could say to like you know what, what richard was saying regarding like the cycle of uh what's happening now yeah man i mean you think i think you gotta you know first like really define what cycle that you're trying to identify all right so if you're looking for like liquidity flow from like a macro perspective you know like actually like expanding and growing this market well you know where is it going to come from all right i mean it can come from capital that's already allocated you know in traditional or non-traditional markets or it can come from new liquidity entering the market market which in our you know our society we, we, you know, arguably just live in a debt driven market. You know, there's not new liquidity being created without new debt being issued. Um, and, you know, we, we've seen that dramatically, right? Like over, over the past two years, printed, you know, roughly 70% of the M1 money supply, you know, like the actual money supply since 2020, it's almost four times larger um, 
than, than it was, right? And that's when we saw so much liquidity come in in such a short period of time. But when you're looking specifically, right? So, so then like we can look at those macro factors and, and, and then you have to like assess, you know, all of the, you know, the, the global um, business arrangements that are going on, right? How are those things going to shake out? What's the strength of the dollar? Um, you know, when is new liquidity going to enter the system? All right. How, how long are rates going to stay high? Um, but then when you look at it on a very micro uh, cycle and, and you look at the NFT and crypto space and, and you look at where we are today, like in a, in a shitcoin cycle, I would say it's probably likely. Um, and again, none of this is financial advice, but probably likely that you see the this liquidity rotate into NFTs before we have any like meaningful type of downtrend, right? That, that, that's typically the liquidity flow in this space is, is you get like the large cap pumps, all right? We saw Bitcoin, we saw ETH run, right? Bitcoin gets to that 30K level. It's a very reasonable place to take a short, right? There's a ton of overhead resistance. Well, where's the liquidity gonna go? We're talking about a bunch of fucking DGENs. They're not actually gonna take profits. They're going to move it into something else that they see, you know, a real, a potentially, you know, really marginal gain on. So it flows into the smaller caps and typically NFTs are that last stop um, for, for the exit liquidity. Breaking news. I'm up big. I got, I got three comments and a couple Hi. different likes from Jordan. You never, you never, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. He put, nope. Thank you so much. <laughs> Never thought it could. It was, whoa, wow. whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, what are you up on though, bro? Because like you, you didn't tell me about it. I said I got I got three comments on my posts on Twitter from Chris Jordan. gave me crap because oh, I nice. do have notifications turned on for him, but I never get them. And I just went through and I liked bullshit. like three I months. I, I liked like three months worth of stuff and and uh, commented on them. I mean, there were a couple things that I liked and commented on. Um, you just got to get like, you got to join the GM cult and uh, be active every day or the algo doesn't pick you up for me. I, I only see, I only see people in my timeline from that are on the, in the GM cult. I know. <clears throat> well, yeah, GM. it's all about GMing. That's, that's the way to win Twitter. Insane. But I did see today that ZK shark, uh, the Bitcoin ordinal legend himself uh, is predicting a 45k bitcoin by june 1st what what do you guys think are we are we going back to the you know we're we getting are we going back to the to the space shuttle you know fueled up ready to rock our suits on or are we gonna explode halfway into the, the sky like today um, from spacex and and head back to the ground to start over what do you guys think i can i, I can argue both sides and, and I will, if, if necessary, but I would love to hear a hot take from a passionate individual. I mean, who, who's bullish? Who's bearish? What's going on? I personally, I'm, I'm on the fence, honestly. Like, I've been waiting for, like, the next big dip and then, like, the real kickstart, but it seems like it's already kickstarted, and that dip, it, like, big dip is probably going to happen a little higher than I expected, and it's going to reach support, so it won't be back down to – to like maybe that eight hundred dollar ETH again, but um yeah, so so I, I really I really don't know what to expect. I'm just trying to learn from previous mistakes and have a little more liquid ready to go. So um yeah, I I, I mean I would I would love to see it. You know, I, I could personally see that. I, I could personally see it go to the the that four um forty k range and then probably see us then maybe there's a there's that significant dip afterwards and drop it back down to like thirty or something and then it just keeps trucking upwards. But I do feel like things are looking pretty good. I don't know. Just a little slower. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean I don't I, I it's hard to it's hard to focus on all this. It's like there's so much news and it's like you just want one nice thing to happen, and it was like Gary Gensler getting ravaged, and it, that, that didn't it doesn't even matter because no, nobody, you know, internally like made for long term. Yeah, it's cool to see him getting beat up about not knowing, not owning crypto or not knowing how to do his job. But um, 
it didn't like cause like any type of like stir. It's like people are just so caught up on uh, on these shit coins that like they're they're missing on like what's going on around like the actual world. I mean, you've got so much happening. I guess you know Walker. I guess what what is your you know what do you what do you uh, what makes you bullish and what makes you bearish? I mean, to to me. To me, it's it's really simple. Like the the short term game, the price, the the the, the price discussion, it, it's really irrelevant, right? Like the the fundamentals for crypto are stronger than ever, right? I mean, Bitcoin. I mean, the the, the banks collapsing, right? This is this is exactly what the technology that was built for. I mean, Bitcoin arguably is the first technology in human history that facilitates global bilateral trade in a trustless manner, right? And, and once we see regulation, there are trillions of dollars sitting on the sideline just waiting to get into this industry, right? They're furious they've missed the gains thus far. But any fiduciary, every fiduciary, has an extremely hard time if any access to crypto, right? Especially to spot trading. Um. And, and, and so Ethereum, right? I mean, since the merge, we are net negative over 100,000 Ethereum tokens. That's a massive amount of value that's been wiped off of that network, right? Running much, much more efficiently. Again, fundamentals have never been better. I think we're also closer than ever to regulation, right? We're seeing the heat. Um, I think the U.S., and, and many regulators are fed up with with a lot of the 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 bad actors and 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 the just blatant fraud that has been going on in the space. And and that's positive, right? Regulation means means trillions of dollars can flow in potentially. I, th- I think very likely. The downside to that is we have absolutely no idea how and what regulation looks like. Because in my opinion, all of the, the, the large, um, the, the people who really, you know, have the wealth, um, the, the people who own the corporations in the free world, they've been sitting on the sideline evaluating for the past 10 years how to ensure that blockchain does not make their business model irrelevant. And, you know, DeFi, um, it just, just is one you know, call out is, is a very powerful technology that in my opinion can completely flip the banking system in a free market. It should over time. All right. But, but we, we, we don't know. Um, and, and then, you know, that you, you look at, right. So, so the fundamentals are super strong, but the, the, the surrounding regulations and the global economic environment isn't so hot. Right. So short term, it could be bad. Right. We it could be bad for several years. You know, is 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 the broader ecosystem of 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 investment and liquidity work their self out and work out issues? Maybe that doesn't happen. Um, But regardless, if that happens or not, if you position yourself well in this industry, I mean, specifically, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely not a Bitcoin maxi, but Bitcoin, man, it's looking good, right? There's a lot more clarity around that technology, a lot less uncertainty. Um, if you position yourself well over, over the next five years, I think you're going to be sitting real fucking good at the end of it. Hey, Walker, I have a, I have a question for you uh, regarding uh, regulation. Um, how do you, um, I don't know if it's really regulation, but how do you feel about, uh, CBDCs and the, the digital currency that, uh, all these countries want to put out? I don't, I mean, I don't know. And so how do you feel about every single move that you make being tracked, verified, audited? Um, no, it's, it's super scary, right? I mean, and, and, and that's the, that's the trade-off, right? Like we, we want to move into this more digital world, um, and, and we want to adopt all of these, you know, really awesome technologies. But at the end of the day, we also have to realize 
they're going to be used against us as well. Um, and, and a CBDC, all right, I mean, it does, it's not inherently bad, right? It's like any other technology. They're, they're, a technology itself is not good or bad. Now, there, there can be a very fundamental argument against that when we start to talk about AI, but we're not talking about that right now. Now, there could be an AI program um, that was introduced to a CBDC. Regardless, it's all governance, right? And, and so technology is not inherently good or bad. It's how you use it, how it's deployed. And what's scary about a CBDC is maybe you have good intention initially, but how long does it take? How far does it go down the line before it's abused and weaponized? Right. Look at look at what's happened with the SWIFT banking system. Russia did something we didn't like and we shut them off. We literally confiscated their money, told them, no, that's not yours. You're not going to use it. It's gone. All right. And, and so those same tactics under a CBDC, well, how easy would that be to do to a citizen? All right. You did something we don't like. You're done. You're completely shut off. You either turn yourself in or you're on the streets. I mean, that doesn't sound very fun to me. OK, yeah, yeah, well, I, I hear what you're saying. Would. You know, I guess my question would be. I mean, aren't we already living in that to a degree anyway? I guess it depends potentially on what country you're in. But how many people are really paying their their day to day expenses with cash at this point? That's untrackable. Most of us are using, you know, direct uh, deposit or direct payment or you know, debit or credit cards, which is all being tracked already anyway, and can be, like you said, turned off at the drop of a hat if you've done something wrong. So, potentially, are we already there? I mean, I, I think I think cash is is that saving grace at this at this point. You know, I mean, I mean, cash is still a very a very autonomous form of of payment. You know, a form form of money, and and you're not only moving right. This is centralized digital bank currency. So this is something that is issued directly from uh, uh, the Federal Reserve to the end user potentially in a crypto wallet. With no regulation, no 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 private sector even built around the economy that's distributed between us and our government, All right? And so I think I think that that's that's the difference, and and also it's the unlimited and instantaneous ability to manipulate the monetary policy, right? I mean, we've already seen other countries, um, you know, China has pushed very hard for the digital yuan. Because that gives them the ability to scale much quicker. All right, they're they're going into the Middle East hard right now. They're putting up tons of of, of infrastructure bills for these other countries to build whatever they want to, and and they are creating allies for for the BRICS nations, you know, and really trying to solidify that side of the world, solidify their power. And the most important thing in the, the global dominance for any country is their money. You know, who, whoever has the supreme currency is, is going to rule the, the next century as we have the last. Um, and, and, and what China has tested in many cases is like this idea of, of economic stimulus introduced on a, you know, a CBDC, a, a, a digital currency, on like a time-based fashion. So you had access to, let's just say, $100, but only for the next 12 hours. And to create like these massive spikes in, in consumer spending. Um, yeah, but I, I just think all of it creates more reach. And I'm, I'm very confident that reach will be abused over time. Oh, that's some scary stuff. I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to get in trouble for jaywalking and my bank account gets shuts off, you know, like, especially if I'm jaywalking before I get to the mall, you know, that would be, that would really suck. I mean, if you're jaywalking out, it's like, ah, fuck it. I don't, I don't need that for an hour, but you know, if you're going somewhere and you, they shut you down before you can get there or you, you know, you just don't get there in time and you, now you can't spend, you lose a hundred bucks. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like that's what Uber already does to me. I mean, Uber eats will send me 40% off, uh, coupons 
And now I don't purchase unless I get a coupon, and it's like for only so long. And uh, yeah, they've got me spending. They they definitely got me spending. Um, but you know what's interesting also is the NFT side of things. A lot of this is very scary, but you know NFTs serve a, almost like a completely different purpose in their own way. I mean, we just saw we just saw like that Counter Strike player getting the the skin that was like a four hundred thousand dollar skin that he can only play on one game. And we also saw, um, the, I think it was Modern Warfare, one of these other games, literally copied like a skin of a one of their guns in the game from like a previous game. It, it just changed the colors on it. It's like, why do you not have the opportunity to just, uh, you know, like uh, transfer the skin over to the other game? And but why do I have to buy a whole nother? Skin to optimize my flesh and bone. Yeah. 